Hello, Michael here with another How Do I Render tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to render teeth using RenderMan in Maya. So I've had, surprisingly, a couple of people ask me about this, and um, so I decided I was going to do a tutorial on this, and it's going to be pretty quick. Um, one user asked me about specifically how to render these teeth um, as an example. And I thought, yeah, teeth are pretty straightforward, you just kind of make them look like plastic and away you go. But the more I thought about it, if you're looking for something a little bit more realistic, there are a couple of techniques that you can apply uh, to get things like the, the darker areas around the gum um, and the subsurface of it as well. So I'm going to show you what I'd do in this circumstance to get something that looks pretty similar to the teeth of this uh, crocodile. Um, so to start off, I'm just going to show you how to do it with some basic geometry and then I'll I'll go a little bit further um, with a more complex model. So in this example, I'm just going to be using this cone here to represent teeth. Um, the reason being because I'm going to need a UV map for this cone uh, to describe uh, a couple of, uh, to describe the direction for the uh, for the ramps that I'll be using. So. Uh, if you're just wanting to do something simple or just try this out, just create a cone. I'm just going to add in a uh, light really quick. Okay, so we'll start by selecting our cone and creating a render man uh, Pixar surface shader. We'll call them this one Pixar Tooth. Then we'll jump into the Hype Shade Editor. Uh, actually, before we do that, we'll have a look at the UVs for this object. So I'm just going to go to four panel layout. And then in this panel, I'm going to change it to the UV Editor. So as you can see, the UVs for this are in two islands essentially. It's got the this ring here at the bottom, which is the underside of the cone, and then this part here at the top, uh, which is the obviously the sides. So that ring there at the bottom is just the bottom face, which I can't quite see in that render there, but that's what's going on. You can sort of see it there. So this will mean that when I'm using a ramp, if I've got it on this y-axis here, um, anything that's dark down here to light down here will mean that it'll be dark to light on the tip. And that's going to be important uh, for driving uh, the color of the subsurface scattering and some diffuse that we're going to mix in as well. All right, so let's map out that tooth. And I'm going to make this a fairly um, yellow tooth as well. So to start, you, you do actually need to make a decision here as to what you're going to be using this tooth for. I'm just creating a Pixar ramp here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just chuck this ramp into the diffuse color channel from the out RGB. Then I'm going to create a couple of extra nodes. Um, I've mentioned this before, but it's good to have the nodes on either end, otherwise the ramp seems to get a bit screwy. So I want a black node there, and then this color is basically going to be the diffuse color of our tooth. So I'm going to start with something sort of yellow, maybe I'm actually going to go sort of a mid-range saturation on that, something like that. And then this color here is also going to be the same. So this black is going to be the bottom of the tooth, and then this sort of cream color is going to be the main color of the tooth. So let's just take a quick render to see uh, which direction that's all facing. Okay, so if I just select my ramp here, I think this is actually a T ramp from memory. Um, and we'll just find where the black part starts. Yeah, so we just want to get it so our black is just near the bottom and then you can tighten up that gradient as much as you want with the node that's next to it or feather it as much as you want as well. So for this ramp, that's going to be about right. So we can also go to our um, Pixar tooth color and then you can decide to add some roughness if you want. Um, it's going to diffuse a bit more but it's going to capture some more of that light. And also we'll go to the specular, uh, primary specular, and we can just blend in a little bit of that. And then maybe a little bit more, uh, not quite that rough. A little bit of roughness, 0.25 I'm using on this. And you can sort of make a decision as to how sort of wet you want them to look. The specularity is going to sort of define that. So as is, if you've got a mouth, that tooth might look exactly how you need it to. Um, Obviously at the moment it's very basic, but this is just an example. Uh, so we can do a few more things though. So I mentioned we could use subsurface scattering. So what I'm gonna do is select this um, uh, this material node, hit three to expand it. Then I'm just gonna type in single because I'm gonna be using the single scatter uh, channel in this. So that's just uh, here. And what I'm gonna do 
is increase the grain gain to be 1.0 and then run the result RGB into the single scatter, scatter color, which is this um, input here. So this is just sort of like your surface color of your of your single scatter channel. So having it the same as the diffuse will multiply it. Uh, I'm gonna reduce the diffuse channel to 0.5 as well, just so we can see a little bit more of that subsurface scattering. And then you can make a decision here as to whether or not you want the internal colors uh, for the single scattering to be a different color than the diffuse color. I'm just going to use the same color So I'm going to plug the result RGB into the single scatter MFP color, which is the multiple free path color uh, So that's the the scattering that's happening on the inside. So we'll take a quick render there and see what's happening so You can see a little bit of difference here. You can see that the light is being uh, transmitted through this smaller area here as, as opposed to that where it's completely blocking the light. So it's creating that subsurface glow, which is generally what you're after when you're using subsurface scattering. So I turn the um, camera around, you can particularly see it on the back facing side. Um, you can define this a bit more if you just go back to your material uh, using the uh, mean free path. So if I change this to five, we'll, which half, we'll get a lot less uh, scattering distance See, as you can see, when you go to one, only the very tip is um, getting subsurface scattering. So figure out how much subsurface scattering you want. I'm probably going to use about five, I think, for the size of this. This is based on the size of your geometry as well. So if you're using a cone just straight out of my polygons, you should have got one that's the same size as this as well. Uh, that's the most straightforward part of it. Also, we can um, go a little bit further if we go into the advanced tab of our single scatter gain uh, of our single scatter channel. Uh, you can affect things like the refractive index. Um, I can't remember the refractive index of teeth is off the top of my head. Uh, it's probably somewhere around around one point one point six or something like that. But one point three is working, so I'm just going to roll with that. Um, but you can also increase the backside gain, which is quite useful. So if you're finding that in your render, you're not getting enough transmission to the backside, you can increase this and you'll start to see a lot more light pass through to the backside of your uh, tooth or whatever object you're doing. Um, but sort of use this sparingly. Um, it's not going to really increase your render time dramatically, but it, it will start to look a little bit funky if you do too much of it. As you can see, that color is becoming a lot more saturated on the inside versus the outside. So um, yeah, it could be a bit too much, but um, also that not being uh, that not being subdivided makes it look a bit weird. So I'll subdivide it, even though it sort of looks like an onion at the moment, and you'll see that it feathers it a bit more. And obviously you could also blur it so the transmission's a bit softer between the two. So you know, that's that's actually not too bad. Um, I was expecting that to look a lot worse in this demo, but uh, yeah. So that's, that's the function of it. I'll show you what it looks like in practice. Okay, so uh, if you follow me on, on Instagram, you would have seen this guy already um, a couple of weeks ago now uh, when this tutorial is released, but I've used the same uh, technique to create the teeth for this guy as well if I just zoom in here a little bit um, so you can see that I put a lot more specularity on this because I wanted his teeth to look wet because he's got a big old gob wrapped around them um, and I've used the same idea with the gradient um, moving from a dark color to the lighter color there if I go to the back side if looking at this tooth in particular you'll see that um, it is getting the transmission through the backside there. I've made it a little bit uh, less obvious, um, a little bit more subtle. Subtlety can also can always be a useful tool, I think. Um, but if you're if you're starting out, um, usually with these sorts of things, what I'd recommend is you just turn everything up to the maximum and then just back it off till you find a nice sweet spot. Um, otherwise, you'll just crawl forever trying to find the the right value. So overdo it first and then wheel it back. I think that's usually the best way to do it. So yeah, you can see with the subsurface scattering, it does look a little bit more sort of realistic, like our re uh, reference. Not as much subsurface scattering as this has, and these teeth look a lot drier closer to maybe just like bone dry bone would look um, but with a little bit of specularity because they're quite smooth um, whereas these teeth are obviously quite wet now the thing about this is if you're using this for animation I generally wouldn't recommend using the subsurface because as you can see from the front 
um, it doesn't really make that big a difference to the overall look of it. So you'll save a lot of render time just by using the ramp um, slide, uh, the ramp in your diffuse channel, and then obviously the specularity and stuff as well. And you're going to get a, a pretty convincing result. If you need close-ups and things like that, then you might want to consider adding adding in the subsurface scattering. But um, if you've just got someone talking, you, none of your audience generally is going to see the subsurface scattering in the teeth. So bear that in mind. If you're looking for realism, obviously the subsurface scattering is going to be useful. Uh, but generally, I'd say you're not going to use it. I ended up using it for this one, obviously for this tutorial, um, and it does, you know, for a still, um, it does zhuzh it up. Up a little bit and this guy's obviously quite over the top and and stuff so you know um, a little bit of variation from stylization and to realism can be kind of fun from time to time but yeah that's that's pretty much all there is to it um, so hopefully you learned something about rendering teeth in this one if you did make sure you click the like button so other people can find this tutorial on YouTube and if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these tutorials every week for products like RenderMan and other CG software. Uh, if you'd like to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.